Welcome to the Solomon Islands. I've been exploring this beautiful remote group of islands for a few weeks, hunting fish in crocodile infested waters, catching my own food, exploring the beautiful forests on land, immersing myself in the local culture, meeting amazing people, and of course, exploring the beautiful underwater world in the stunning remote part of the world. I've managed to spare a large dog tooth tuna, Spanish mackerel, giant trevally and much much more. In this Primal Pursuit episode we're back out once again diving the beautiful coral reefs, hunting for the famous dog tooth tuna while freediving, testing our physical and mental capabilities and bringing home fresh seafood to share with the village and friends. We go hunting for coconut crabs, discover beautiful coral gardens, swim throughs, hunt the famous dog tooth tuna and much more. Sit back and enjoy this awesome episode rounding up the epic adventure to the Solomon Islands. We're a bit late, it's about close to nine but um, yeah I'm sure we'll find some, find some fish. Everything's pretty remote here so all the fuel gets shipped in and big barrels sit there no gas station around just a, a barrel at a time We've made it to our dive spot, absolutely beautiful. Forest just comes straight down and just drops off straight into deep blue water. Let's go get some fish. The hunt is on. I sink down onto the reef floor, warming up the lungs, and make it to this nice ledge here, dropping off into deeper water below. I'm sitting at about 15 meters below the surface, and it seems to be quite the hot spot. All fish mingling out on front. It's a bit late in the morning, really, you want to be hunting on dawn or dusk in the tropics. As with most places it becomes a lot more fishy at these times. Fish actively feeding, predators hunting. Nothing coming into range, I move along the reef, same technique, finding a position, sitting still for a while, trying to lure the curious fish into my spare gun's range. These darker fish here, the locals call them the chicken fish, I think the other name was pongu, pangu, a staple in their diet. Good eating fish, actually quite tasty. So always good to take a few of these back and share with the village. I'm hoping for a Spanish mackerel or a large predator as such to swim by, but I'll take anything. Finally one of these fish comes into range, I stretch out and take a shot, unfortunately just skimming past the head. Fish turns slightly as I pull the trigger. All good. Plenty more around. I'm down again. Just sitting on this reef drop off. Beautiful ledge into deeper water. There's a nice vermiculated trout below. Good size. Just waiting, trying to lure these fish in. Very, very smart fish. I'm running out of breath, I've been down too long, I need to make a move so I slowly stretch out a couple of kicks, I'm hoping to close this gap but the fish is too smart. Another school of barracuda swim past, quite a common sight around these waters. I'm down a bit deeper this time, 
sitting about 21 meters using this beautiful big fan coral to my advantage hiding behind it just slowly moving my head around to see what's around the chicken fish are coming in closer and there seems to be nothing else so I'm gonna wait for a good shot stretch out and take one get my chance here and calmly stretch out this time with a good solid holding shot as long as I can keep this away from the sharks it's a good eating fish for the village slowly kick to the surface I've been down a while you've still got to slowly kick up always be calm every part of a free dive otherwise you're gonna run out of air risk blackout Oscar's at the surface and uh, we have a fish on the board awesome Oscar shows me how it's done, securing a beautiful vermiculated trout. Nice. We finished the morning off managing a few more fish. Me sparing this nice unicorn fish. Also commonly overlooked but good eating. Lots of meat on these big fish. And then in the last dive, adamant to get something interesting, something more special, I sunk down all the way down, deep down, 27 meters here, and I spot a midnight snapper. I'm slowly trying to close the distance on the fish, but it gets away, and then another one decides to swim straight for me, and I get a good shot into this midnight snapper. The fish darts off into the reef wrapping itself around all the coral, not ideal. But after a few minutes untangling, I finally bring the fish to the surface and I'm stoked. A new species ticked off. All right. Beautiful little reefy. I think it's a midnight snapper. Woohoo! Midnight snapper? Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Well, we've done all right. I didn't get the uh, coral trout hunting a few of them, but uh, they were a bit too smart for me. Here's our collection. Here's the midnight snapper I got, so I'm pretty, pretty happy with that one. Something different, something new. Cool colours on the face. Apparently good eating, so it's my catch. But yeah. Good little haul. These trout, they're smart. Some places around the world, from what I've heard, you can just bomb down everywhere, take your pick. But here, I'm not really seeing any sizable ones until you're down around 20, 25 meters. Time to fill it up this midnight snapper. Absolutely beautiful fish. Just look at the colors on its head. Incredible. Apparently very good eating, so get these fillets off. Right, here's the two fillets. Looks like normal, <laughs> normal fish flesh. Just gonna scale them quickly and uh, cook it up for lunch. As with every other day at the Driftwood Lodge, we would feast on the day's catch. In this case, fresh midnight snapper accompanied by some stunning Spanish mackerel here from yesterday's catch. Always eating well. All this paired with some fresh, locally sourced organic vegetables. Always a great meal. After lunch, it was time to walk off the meal and go see what was hiding in the forest nearby, hidden beneath the canopy. 
little bit. Little bit, yeah. Them fellas don't understand. Ah. Oh, that's a beast. <laughs> now it's done. Right, we're going for a walk mission up to check out a bit of a shrine. Apparently a skull up here, up where they had their fortress back in the day, um, where they would hide from the war canoes. So yeah, we're just bashing our way up the jungle and uh, yeah, see what we got. I think this is the fort, huge hunk of coral ancient coral hillside please so this seems to be not a uh, not not a war, uh, war, warrior not a warrior yeah but someone special from the village yeah. or this is how they how people bury their a dead guy <laughs> so why only one skull yeah uh, because our uh, uh, people, if uh, what uh, men die, they usually what uh, uh, they take a stick and they cut it and they push it, maybe two stick in the head and up, and they just put it like this, and uh, they usually take a stone and uh, what uh, bury it uh, this part, and after ten days, when the body is rotted, they will come and collect the head and uh, they will take it and put it in a set place like that. Okay. Yeah, but that skull is different from the uh, warrior's, uh, warrior's uh, head. So where are the warrior's yeah. heads? The warrior's, uh, the warrior's head, they, they, they will uh, put it in a, what, a, a shrine, uh -huh. because he's a very special guy. What a uh, Oru, yeah. Got a house like this one, stone house. Stone house. Yeah, indeed. All right, we're gonna go try and set a trap for some coconut crabs. I've uh, put a request in, so. Murphy, you got the uh, the tools there? <laughs> <laughs> go show you how it's done. Hopefully it works. They like the fresh one or old one? Old one. That's your main uh, coconut plantation here? Yeah. I can when they're fucking coconuts that high above my head. <laughs> Widow makers, mate. Yeah. So I call these things fucking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One. Mm, nice. Yeah, it's good. always good. Yep. Track. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to try? Yeah, yeah, I, I love, love this stuff. Right. Nice. Mm. It's so sweet, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. We have to cut them fish. Cut them first. Right. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Not many people know that they do that. Nah. They're powerful. You said best sweet one. Yum. Mm. Alright, so we're at some coral outcrop here, caves, and uh, this is apparently where the crabs sleep. In the bush here once would have been the old coral reef drop off thousands or millions of years ago long time you can see their caves holes all under there so time to set the trap okay. yeah first trap set not a trap lure, lure. <laughs> Crab bait. That's cool. We've got this coral complex, 
I'll call it a, call it a coral balmy, an ancient one. <laughs> We're just planting the coconuts all around here on the ledges, tying them on. Loki is anyways, I better come help, eh? And hopefully, a couple of hours after dark, the crabs will come crawling out. See all these caves in here, they must be hiding all through here. Beautiful. See all these coral cliffs going way up. <laughs> Lots of remnants of um, the old sea floor, sea level. Traps are set. We're gonna go cool off and then uh, gear up. Another spear fishing session. We're pumped. We're gonna hit another island today. I haven't dove yet. Always haven't for a while. Usually pretty sharky, but uh, apparently at the moment not too bad. So um, we'll. Hope that's the case. Absolutely tough, man. Taking a day off. Yeah, it's uh, quite a sharky spot around here, the Solomons, generally, but uh, we'll, we'll survive. It is lunchtime at Driftwood, and we have some of the doggy from yesterday. Nice salad coming up, and some beautiful bananas. Lovely. Jordy's stretching up, he's ready. Gun for choice today is what I've been using this whole trip at the Solomons. It's my new favorite gun for blue water, single roller carbon 130 Rob Allen, and it's just epic. One band to load, accurate, smooth as, just simple. On the reel, definitely uh, got a bit lucky shooting that doggy on the reel, but um, got spare shafts. If you can shoot accurately, it's a big part of it. Regardless how you shoot doggies, whatever gear you've got, if you don't hurt them enough, uh, you're going to lose it, which happened yesterday. I think Matt shot three and lost three to sharks. They're, um, they're pretty hungry here, so we need to get those headshots. See what we can find today. Well, it's the last day on my Solomon's trip. We're up to a spot called the Coral Gardens. Absolutely beautiful underwater, as the name suggests. Beautiful coral. Backdrop once again on the lush forest, meeting the water, and it's looking very clean. See what we can find, but yeah, just a nice little relaxing dive to end this awesome trip with uh, Geordie. <laughs> and the boys, of course. This was one of those beautiful spots, very hard to capture on camera, on the GoPro. So after a few minutes, we just ditched the guns and enjoyed swimming between all these coral caves and cracks and crevices. It was such a beautiful spot. Really hard to capture the vibrant colors and formations of the coral, but you get a small taste for it here, an absolutely incredible spot. Very, very cool. We spent about half an hour just free diving around. Geordie's practicing his bubble rings. There's turtles, all sorts happening. Just a stunning spot to just relax, free dive. And for once, not focus on killing fish or gathering seafood and just enjoying the incredible formations of this coral nature. It's amazing when you drop the spear gun, you start to notice all the smaller critters, smaller fish. There's so much going on underwater. 
definitely something I'll do more often. After some relaxing free diving at the coral gardens, it was time to go spearfishing. We headed off along this beautiful piece of coastline, water's edge backdropped by dense thick jungle. An incredible part of the world. We sped off with only a few hours left of daylight, heading to the famous Bago, a spot known for Plenty of dogtooth tuna, other big pelagics, but also plenty of hungry sharks ready to steal your catch. It was going to be interesting, it was going to be exciting, we were pumped. While the main target was dogtooth tuna and big pelagics, I still hadn't ticked off a coral trout yet, so I was down on the reef edge here, sitting in these hot spots, plenty of bait fish around, anything could swim by, but it was very good trout territory, and I started to spot a few. Creeping down slowly, again just using anything I can for cover. Spot a nice one here, but stretch out, miss this one. I'm almost about to give up and head to the main spot for the afternoon, and then I spot this trout just sitting here underneath this coral. Wait for a good shot, and bang! I have a shaft through a coral trout, finally, a vermiculated trout. Awesome. Finally got one of these pesky little coral trout. I mean, chasing them around all trip. Happy days. Finally, we make it to Bago, the famous spot, the fishy spot, and as soon as we jumped in, I understood why the boys kept talking about it. It was stacked with fish. Every ledge, every drop off, just vast schools of all sorts of species. Unbelievable. It wasn't the cleanest, so we had to be on edge. There were plenty of sharks around, and we could already see them cruising the depths in the distance. We get straight into it, Geordie putting a shot into a barracuda here. And it doesn't take long, literally seconds, before I can dive down for a second shot. It's a Sharknado, 
and this big barracuda is just vaporized in the blink of an eye. Both fish just torn to shreds in seconds. Unbelievable. current was absolutely hauling, the place was loaded with bait fish, sharks, it was alive as you can see, unbelievable. The current was so strong, we only had about two dives and then we'd drift off the reef and we'd have to start again, get back on the boat. After the Sharknado tearing Geordie's Barracuda to pieces, the sharks are wound up. They are everywhere. They've had a taste for blood. So we need to be very careful with what we shoot, where we shoot it, and most likely going to need teamwork to land any fish. Geordie lands a nice wee GT here, manages to get that one clear of the sharks, and we're back down hunting. Huge school of midnight snapper here, all good fish, but as with spearfishing, we can be and have to be selective. We are after dog tooth tuna, so we're passing up good fish like these. But that's the fun of it, and that's the beautiful part of the sport. We can be so selective. I'm just sitting there being patient. And then I notice a couple of GTs come swimming in to range. Swim up to them, stretch out, and get a pretty good shot into this fish, I thought. Unfortunately, it must have been a little bit high. Matt swims straight down to help secure it, but it tears off. Did it get off? Yeah, I was wrapping it pretty hard up. <laughs> I didn't notice it, I just went after the shark. Yeah. Just after the GT ripping off, one of the rubbers broke on my gun, with the wishbone popping out, only myself to blame, rigging this gun myself. After spending about 40 minutes in the boat, manhandling a bridle back in with nothing but a bit of spit, with no tools, I finally managed to get it back in, and I've got the last dying moments of light left to hunt. I'm on the reef here, it's still covered in fish, the whole water column full. And with that sun setting behind the island here, I know it's magic hour, magic time for dogtooth tuna to rise out of the depths. Big schools of barracuda here, but I have to be patient, have to be selective, and wait for the right opportunity. Sharks are cruising, Everything's come up onto the reef. There has to be a doggy coming in soon. Suddenly, a dog tooth tuna appears beneath me and Oscar, with the last two left in the water, and we both dive down simultaneously. I'm in front though, there's no chance of Oscar getting a shaft into it. I chase it and chase it, but it just swims off into the depths. But it's a good sign that doggies have turned up. There was two of them. Yeah. One last time. Last. Last. 
the other boys have called it a day and literally I yell out one last dive and here I go sinking down it's getting dark it's getting gloomy it's very sharky it has an eerie feeling about it but it's very fishy huge school of barracuda here I'm just admiring these beautiful fish this amazing school peek my head around and suddenly a dog tooth appears out of the gloom I start cornering it trying to intercept its path closing the gap closing the gap it's now or never and I pull the trigger whack hitting the dog tooth right through the spine right through the lateral line and the fish is stone cold dead very lucky there's sharks behind it and I swim to the surface unbelievable another dog tooth stoned on my real gun absolute scenes Second doggy, just just on that dusk, every, all the bait moved up onto the uh, top of the reef there and the current slowed down. Everything was just cruising around, schools of barracuda, about five sharks around me. And then uh, we saw two, almost close a shot, and then I said one more dive. He said, he said all right, last one. <laughs> dive down and uh, yeah, spawned it. All right. Master. Yeah. <laughs> Master bomb man. Oh, he got second shot for a doggy. <laughs> Coconut crab. Come in for three feet. Hello. Jump. What's this one? That one we call it Coco Shoe. He's our first coconut crab. Looks edible size. Oh, <laughs> got it. <laughs> this is beautiful. Wow, look at all this. Well, we only found one coconut crab worth taking home. And the next day we decided to release it as it was a 
female and they're not very big. Well, the guys said they were going to release it. Uh, we'll never really know the truth. I have my doubts. But anyways, that was the end to the awesome trip to the Solomon Islands. Cheers to everyone at the Driftwood Lodge. Matt, Jordy, Gabe, the whole crew. What a special time, what a special part of the world. Taking off some firsts, dog tooth tuna, trout, midnight snapper, plenty of species. Eating well, relaxing, exploring. Just an epic time in the Solomon Islands. Cheers for coming along. If you haven't seen the other parts of this series, check the description below for links. If you like that and want to support the channel, hitting subscribe, that's the best way. Really appreciate that. Thumbs up if you liked it. Write a comment where I should go next. If you want some merch, primalpursuit.co.nz. Other than that, cheers for watching everyone. Thanks for coming along on the ride. Happy to share these adventures with you. I hope this has inspired a few of you to get out there. Travel if you can. Or just get out into your backyard. Put a mask on, grab a snorkel, see what's underwater. Who knows, you might even get a fish to bring home for dinner. In the worst case, you've got some exercise. Then clear the mind. Cheers Solomon Islands. Until next time. And that's a wrap, another Primal Pursuit mission done and dusted. See you next time. Cheers.